we know that electrons are responsible for the flow of current through conductors. We are going to see that the current is opposite to the flow of electrons in electric current through conductors. Now we will group the charges in quantization of charge. So if you have Q is a charge on each one, N are the number of charges. The total charge will be N into Q. And if E is the electron, then E is equal to 1.6 into 10 is to minus 19 coulomb is a charge on an electron. Current I, we already know, is nothing but the rate of flow of charges. So we can write a limit delta T tending to 0, delta Q upon delta T is as current. So I is nothing but Q upon T. We have L as the length of the conductor. So if you increase the length, the number of charges will also increase. If you increase the area of cross section A of the conductor, then too the number of charges will be more. The total number of electron is N into E. So obviously the total charge Q is equal to N A L into E. Multiplying all of them. So current is nothing but Q by T. So we can write at it as N A L E upon T. Now, you know, if the electrons are moving at random, then the speed is 10 days to 6 meters per second. But the moment you apply an electric field, the movement of the electron gets restricted and the speed reduces to 10 days to minus 4 to 10 days to minus 5 in case of conductors. That slow it becomes. And this is known as the drift speed VD. And we know velocity is distance upon time. So time will be the distance L, the length of the conductor, upon the velocity, the drift velocity VD. So we can substitute the equation 2 in 1 and get another equation for current. I is equal to NAE upon L upon VD, that is NAEVD. So you have got equation for I as Q by T, NAE upon T as well as NAEVD. So three equations for current. We have VD as a drift velocity and we rearrange it to get I upon NE that is equal to J upon NE. So if you compare the two equations, J is nothing but I upon A. That is the current upon the area, which is known as the current density. So the random speed of the electron is 10 to 6 meters per second. The speed in conductor made of copper is 10 to minus 4 to 10 to minus 5 meters per second. Let us assume this is the conductor and these are the charges, the positive and the negative charges moving, having random direction. And if you take this as a forward direction and the electrons moving in this direction, then the current is in the opposite direction. The flow of electrons are restricted by other atoms and molecules in a conductor. And that is the resistance. And in some places, we have to put this resistance purposely. And these are the different objects. And the different types of resistors, we have the physical appearance as in the form of a linear ones and the non-linear one. The non-linear ones are thermistors which depends on the temperature. The resistance depends upon temperature. Photoresistors, resistance depends upon the light, photo. And then the varistors, wherein the resistance depends upon the potential difference. The linear ones are again divided into two types, the fixed type and the variable type. The fixed type, we are going to study a few, like the carbon composition ones, the carbon flim and the wire wound. And the variable ones are the rheostat, the potentiometer and trimmer. So we see some pictures of them which are very commonly seen in the labs, the resistance box, the rheostat, the carbon composition ones, the potentiometer, thermistor and the photoresistors. Now let's talk about the Ohm's law experiment. We know Ohm's law states that when the physical state of the conductor remains constant, I is proportional to V current is proportional to the potential difference. So we make a circuit diagram here. We have a cell 
a key k a real stack to vary the current we have an ammeter in series to measure the current and we have here the resistance under consideration and it is connected series in series so all these are in series and we connect the voltmeter to measure the potential difference across the resistance it's in parallel the circuit under consideration is this actually uh, we introduce the ammeter the voltmeter so we have here e is the el eliminator of the battery k is the key r h is a rheostat r is the resistance a is the ammeter v is the voltmeter and we know resistance is potential difference upon current according to ohm's law so r is v upon i resistance depends on the device or the object example of the ohmic substances so before that let's see the ohm's law right over we see the potential difference and the current is measured using the earlier circuit diagram so we vary the voltage measure the current find r as um, you put it in the value v is equal to i r so r is equal to v upon i so you put the value over here and you get r is constant and if you plot a iv characteristic iv graph then you get a straight line graph so that's linear so ohmic substances obey ohm's law i is proportional to v they have linear iv characteristics resistance is constant temperature plays an important role in affecting the value of current and resistance example are carbon resistors and wire wound resistors there are many other examples also non ohmic substances then will the, will not obey ohm's law so does not obey ohm's law they have non linear iv characteristic resistance is a function of i and v temperature does not play an important role in affecting the value of current and resistance examples are liquid electrolyte vacuum tubes junction diodes thermistors etc so if you plot a graph again the iv graph you see r is not constant in the table so you get a graph like this for this particular one there are many other iv characteristics for different resistors this is one of the examples so we will talk about the resistors more about them in our next slide so we will continue next time bye